by Mars in the pit. Swung on and hit the right field. That's way back there. Hold on. Welcome to the SEC on ESPN, College Station, Texas, the side. A beautiful Saturday afternoon at Bluebell Park for a big series finale between third-ranked LSU and Texas a and It is the rubber game of a three-game set, a game certainly big in importance for both teams. You look at the SEC West, LSU can wrap up that division for the 17th time with a win. Their magic number over Arkansas is simply one. Now, how did we get to this point? Well, Kyle Peterson here with me this afternoon. I'm Dari Noka. You've seen your fair share of dark skies and bolts of lightning over the last couple of days. Way too much of it this entire season. This is the way it started. Mike and Reynolds in the A&M offense came alive. An important game one win for A&M. They win the opener 2-1. But Friday, I know the shoe had the ace out there. Aaron Nola has been as good as just about anybody in the entire country. He was at it again. A game that yellow shoe offense came alive too. 17 hits for the Tigers. In the second game, they fight all the way back. Started yesterday, finished today. The Tarps out again, and the LSU offense would continue. Mark Laird and Wright with a final out. LSU even to series 7 4. And with that, we say good Saturday afternoon to you. Dari Noka alongside the three time All American from Stanford, Kyle Peterson. We are playing. It's interesting today. SEC rules say, since we had to finish that game this morning, that the second game of a getaway day is seven games, seven innings. It's not a nine inning game this afternoon we've got for you. It is a seven inning game. And you think that might actually favor the home team today? I think it does. I think it favors a and I mean, their closer Jester did not throw yesterday. He did throw in game one. So he's fresh. And if you have to stretch him out, you can stretch him out. Parker Ray, who will start for a and today, was a reliever as of two weeks ago. Yeah. And so he's a guy that has stretched out a few times, but still you'd rather see it for A&M. If you get four out of Ray, you're in a pretty good spot. And for LSU, you're going to see one of the most balanced teams in the entire country. Field 981, that leads the SEC. At one point during the season, they were field 986 as a club. On the mound, solid top to bottom, 240 ERA. Aranola really the ace. We'll see Ryan Eads today. And then offensively, the boys can swing it too. 310 ERA as a club for LSU. Now we are underway here in College Station. You mentioned Parker Ray. This is his third career start. I'm not just talking about third career start at Texas A&M. He didn't start a single game in high school either. 33 straight relief appearances over his time at A&M before making his first start. And this is number three. And tell us about this young man. Well, he's a kid that from a stuff standpoint probably fits better in a short relief role. Fastball, 90-91, former setup guy. And so he's, he's used to throwing in pressure situations. They would try to use him to get to Jester. We talk about just the third career start. He does throw strikes, and that's the key today for Ray. Their general third starter, Rafael Pineda, could not go today. Had a little bit of soreness in the arm, so they hold him out, which is which pushed Ray into this spot. Strained rib cage muscle for Rafael Pineda before the game. Rob Childress said, no worries. He should be good to go for his next start, which would potentially come at Tennessee next week. This LSU batting order, we talked about it, how good it is, really top to bottom. Sean McMullen. The junior designated hitter leading it off this afternoon. One two count from Ray. Got him. So good start for Parker Ray as he strikes out McMullen looking. We look at the Tigers and again. You go three through seven. I, I don't know that anybody nationally compares to this group. No, and, and you got a guy in McMullen who just struck out there. Is but good. Laird can really push it all around the ballpark. But Alex Bregman's a top freshman in the entire country. Leads the SEC in average hits and runs. Just a freshman has hit third from the opening game all the way through for LSU this year. Well, you mentioned Mark Laird. He is up right now. The 6'1 freshman from Monroe. Not a guy who strikes out much. Got a ton of speed. You mentioned Parker Ray again getting the start, his third career start for Texas A&M. He came to school as a catcher. He didn't play as a true freshman. Transferred to Texarkana Community College, where he picked up work as a relief pitcher. And here he is starting against LSU on a Saturday afternoon. Game three to try to win the series. Yeah, <laughs> and, and maybe the most important SEC series of the year for Texas A&M. Just when you look at their chances to get into the postseason. 
And that's sent into left field. Up comes the left fielder, Brandon Wood, out number two. Texas A&M defensively. We're used to seeing that young man at shortstop. Mikey Reynolds, the senior, leading the way on the infield. He can play. Can really play. Came in as a JUCO transfer last year. Stepped in and get that out. Slider that just caught a little bit too much. Most times on the mound, especially when it's a one hopper, you don't mind if that. If that one gets him, it drops right down in front. You might steal a an out right there. Jones just shows you the the range that he has. Wasn't going to make the play, but still got all the way to knock that ball down. So now the ninth man of the Aggie order, Jace Statum. Steps in the right fielder. Oh, and looks like they've got Bratson picked off. Indeed, they do. Alex Bregman makes the tag. So AM runs themselves out of the inning. Statham will lead off in the third. Yeah, and he got a running spot right here, and LSU was dialed up and ready for a good move by Eads. And this is when you show your best move. Watch it front knee. Front knee's going to buckle just a little bit. A lot of times the runner will bite on that. Eads picks him off. Still scoreless through two. Al Park in College Station as we go into the third inning of a scoreless game, a series finale, a rubber game between third ranked LSU and Texas A&M. Dari Noka, Kyle Peterson with you. 8-9-1 due up in the LSU order. Ty Ross, the catcher, leading off the inning. And he ripped that Parker Ray pitch, but well foul. I mean, hammered that thing into left field. He can show you that. <laughs> I mean, when, when he gets it, it goes a long way. The problem is he's susceptible to the breaking ball sometimes, too. That one hung up there, and Ross spun on it. I don't think they'll go back to that spot again. Ross hitting 208. He hit 292 a season ago. What causes that? Is it, is it just gripping too tight? I mean, what ultimately can you take out of a drop of, of 84 points? I think one of the challenges in college baseball is the sample set is a lot smaller than it is in the major leagues. And you look at some guys to win, okay, now we're 50 games in. Well, in the big leagues, it's a month and a half, two months, and you don't have the rest of it to go. So if you get off to a soft start, which Ross has and really hadn't picked it up a whole lot, which is not quite as much time to get it back. He's a catch and throw guy first, and obviously you want as much offense as you can possibly get out of him. He's beating his buddy. Yes. He's supposed to do that to you. Troy right. Stein may try to foul one off his mask next time. Yeah. <laughs> Take that. As easy as that would be, right? Again, a reminder, a seven-inning game today because we had to finish up game two this morning. So SEC rule state, second game of a getaway day must be seven which makes every hitter, every inning much more important. It's one of the other reasons you've seen so much action on the base pass already. I mean, A&M right there gets a guy picked off. LSU's put a guy, a few guys in motion. Mikey Reynolds was running in the first. Ross leadoff walk here in the LSU third. NBA playoffs continue tonight. A couple of big game threes on ESPN and ABC. First at 5 Eastern, it's Kevin Durant and the Thunder against Zach Randolph and the Grizzlies in Memphis. Then at 8 Eastern on ABC, Carmelo and the Knicks go face to face in Indianapolis against Paul, George, and the Pacers. Coverage begins on ESPN 430 Eastern with Kia NBA Countdown. What Durant's done so far, the problem is for the Thunder. And as an Oklahoman, I cover them or watch them awfully closely. He isn't getting enough help. We'll see if that can improve as that's a base hit from the nine hole hitter Andrew Stevenson. So LSU now with two on and nobody out. I think everybody in the park thought that Stevenson was going to butt right there. And bang, first pitch they run a hit and run. So you got Ross off and running. He was one stolen base the entire year. But the other thing that it does is it simplifies the approach for Stevenson, who has had kind of a rough offensive year. Hit and run, all you're thinking is short. Just be short, try to hit the ball hard instead of going up there and trying to do too much. So it works both ways. You get a guy in motion, but at the same time, it simplifies it for Stevenson. Now you turn the order over with two guys on base. Now you go to the top of the order. Sean McMullen, who struck out looking. Now stepping into the batter's box with two on and nobody out. So a walk and a base hit off Parker Ray, who cruised through the first two innings, struck out four. Now finds himself in a bit of a jam here in the third. 
Mullen can't hold up, fouls it off. Thursday, McMullen 0 for 4, didn't get on base. That actually snapped a 20 game run in which he did find his way on base. Now he squares the butt and he can't get that one down. 0 oh and 2 now to McMullen. It's another thing when you watch oh, LSU, he, they say went after. They say no, they say he didn't go after it. I actually thought he did. That's my fault. Let's see what the bat did. Oh boy, I don't know. It's one of those you start to go and then you pull it back just to see if you can get away with it. At what point can you pull it back? That's the question. Yeah, well, you're not supposed to be able to after you go after it, which it looked like he, <laughs> he, he definitely he did, did both. <laughs> we got the benefit of the call there. Again, Ty Ross on second, Andrew Stevenson on first. We see Ray over there a little bit interested in Ross. And McMullen does not have a sack bunt all year, and that's the one thing with LSU. They don't bunt that much. 12 sack bunts for Laird, seven for Ross, three for Ibarra. That's about it of their regular guys. Now, now two and one. Again, in the hole here for LSU is a 400 hitter and Alex Bregman. You want to be careful. The situation that will be in place when he steps in. Two and one. Nobody out here as Ray has found trouble. McMullen slapper to center field. That ball is down in front of Craig Bratson. Ross going to stop at third, probably wisely so, but the bases are loaded and nobody out for the number three team in the country. So now the second hole hitter for LSU, Mark Laird, steps in. He flew to left his first time up. What's the approach here with Bregman, Katz, Ryan Zibara coming up next? I'd say the biggest thing right now is, is if there's ever a time that you think strikeout on the mound, you think strikeout right now because then you keep a double play in order that potentially ends the inning. Well, they're in on the corners here for Texas A&M again. This is where it matters that it's a seven inning game, not a nine. Over at second, they got it picked off. Stevenson picked off at second. A big out for Texas A&M. I don't know if I've ever seen a guy do this out of the windup. So he starts on the windup. He doesn't start out of the stretch. Watch where he starts. And as a base runner, when you see a guy out of the windup with the bases loaded, on second base, the last thing you're thinking is he's going to pick. And you can see how late the break is. That's a heck of an athletic move by Mikey Reynolds just to make that play. If he's out of the stretch, they don't pick him off. They don't pick him off in that spot because the mindset's different of the runner. But out of the windup, you fall asleep a little bit. That's a great move, and you can see Rob Childers standing there right there. That's all him. That's all him to intentionally put him in the windup and then call the pickoff. Now it changes the end. You get a ground ball, double play, inning over, you sneak out of one. Well, you mentioned it. What a play by Mikey Reynolds. Wasn't the best throw, and he's running to the bag, so he's got to slam the brakes on and dive back the other direction. I don't know if I've ever seen it. A guy that starts out in the windup and just spins. And the key is you got to clear the rubber with your right foot. If he clears the rubber with the other foot, it starts him into his motion and it would be a balk. But if you clear the rubber with your right foot, you're fine. Spins and throws right away. And it looked like uh, Paul Maneri was having a little heart to heart with Andrew Stevenson when he got in the duck out there, too. I bet he was. Now, what's the conversation we just saw between Childress and Parker Ray? Well, I think part of it is trying to defend and potentially trying to defend in this case. A safety squeeze because you got a guy in Laird up there that, that is not afraid to bunt. So now if they run the safety squeeze, it's Rob Childers going out and saying, okay, here's what we're going to do if it's here. Here's what we're going to do if it's there. This is how we're going to defend it all the way around. So now not loaded with nobody out. Instead, they're on the corners with one out for Laird. Never shows bunt here, one and up. Hunter Melton's about two or three steps towards the home plate side of third base right now. The 1 0 Laird sends it into right field. Base hit. In to score comes Ross. And LSU strikes first. 1 0 in the third. 
This is what they need Lair to do more of, and that's just hit the ball on the ground. He's a, his approach most of the time is to take a ball to left field, but when he hits the ball on the ground with his speed, good things happen, and this time just hooks it through the hole. Remember, you get the first baseman holding him on. So right now, Lankford is holding the base runner on. The hole is bigger to right field. Lair just simplifies. He gets out in front of it, pulls it into the hole, puts LSU on the board. So LSU strikes first in the rubber game of this series as Alex Bregman, the fabulous freshman shortstop, steps in. Bregman struck out swinging in the first. See the old school no batting glove look. It was raining. Raining early and he threw the batting gloves. I was a little bit offended. I mean, you, you step in there. Let's go. No batting gloves. Just, just tee it up. That's what he's done the whole year. That ball in the dirt nicely stopped by Stein. And it's 2 0 now to Bregman. Albuquerque, New Mexico. His hometown. Not only is he just incredibly gifted, but they say he's as hard a worker as you will ever find. They tell stories about him calling the members of the staff, asking him to turn the lights on at 9 30, 10 o'clock to come out and hit. He just wants to play. And now he gets to play with a 3 0 count. Again, we know he'll be here at least two more seasons. If you don't go into the draft after high school, you got to wait three years to do it. So LSU knows they've got some time with this young man. I think there's a few scouting directors across the country going, you know, maybe we should have popped him a little bit higher out of high school than we did. He had an injury, which is what caused him to drop in the draft. It's the only reason he got to LSU. Well, Bragman on a 3-0 swings, and he finds himself into a double play. The 3-0 green light to one of the best hitters in the country ultimately cost the Tigers, Kyle. How athletic is Mikey Reynolds? We talked about just a minute ago, making the play when he goes to second base when the ball's away. Watch this. He's got to go glove side and then pirouette and spin. Gets more on the throw and just gets Bregman at first base. Great play to really change the inning, but the Tigers get one. Welcome back to College Station, Texas. 1-0 LSU. They strike first in the third of this seven-inning ball game today. Could have been worse if you're AM. They got out of there having given up just one. Dory Noka, Kyle Peterson with you, and we welcome into the booth Kendall Rogers, national baseball writer for Perfect Game. You follow him on, on Twitter. You will find incredible college baseball information here. And an angle that we haven't necessarily taken is the importance of today for Texas AM as it comes to their NCAA chances. How do you see it? Well, I think going into the weekend, you look at their SEC record, they obviously need this series win. I think even with this series win, uh, they'd probably have to take care of business against Tennessee next weekend and probably do pretty well in the SEC tournament. So a uh, tough chore here getting a win over LSU today, but uh, they can do that uh, and uh, you know finish strong. They could, they could get in, but I think right now uh, it's a long shot, whereas for LSU, I mean, they're, they would have to lose a national seat at this point. Jay Statham for Texas A&M leading off. He was left up at the plate when Craig Bratson got himself picked off to end the A&M second. And Texas A&M comes in well below 500, but an opportunity to take two out of three against LSU as you look at their resume would seem like it would get some national recognition and attention. Well, no doubt about it. I think when you, when you look at A&M, uh, you know, losing Michael Walker and Ross Stripling from their rotation last year, those two pretty big guys to, to lose. You know, Walker is already shooting up the uh, Cardinals organization, and uh, you know, those two tough guys to lose. But I think when you, you know, kind of moving forward, uh, you know, it'd be interesting to see how these guys kind of transition to the SEC because it's a different game. It's not necessarily uh, significantly better, but it's a different style of play in terms of offense from the SEC and the Big 12. Well, that's up the middle there for Statham. Jacoby Jones makes it. Can he get him? No, Statham safe at first. But a good looking play by the second baseman. Good looking player. I mean, he had to come all the way on the, the shortstop side of second base to, to make this play. We saw Jones dive on the ball at the middle earlier. No chance to make that play, but it just shows you the athleticism here. He's everything going away from first base. Still spins and doesn't quite get Statham. So AM with the leadoff man on here in the third. We, kind of we, we, we start talking about national stuff. Um, and we've talked a lot already a little bit about national seeds and, and we're getting closer and the importance of the national seed obviously is you control your own destiny at home the whole way but for you who are your eight right now if, if you could go one through eight? I mean I think I think you look at uh, you know uh, you know Vanderbilt uh, LSU is teams that uh, certainly are in great shape for a national seed right now obviously North Carolina would be my top overall national seed I think when you look at those guys overall 
Uh, they're my national championship favorite. I think when you look at the just the overall balance, if you look at the rotation, Ken Emanuel, their, their left-hander, their ace, just done a tremendous job this year. You look at Colin Moran, a guy who I think will be a top five pick in the MLB draft, uh, potentially. Uh, he's had a great year for them as well. So uh, I think you look at North Carolina, Vanderbilt, uh, Oregon State, a team a lot of people don't talk about. Pat Casey's team, once again, kind of under the radar a little bit, uh, you know, to a lot of people. But Matt Boyd, uh, the left hander, has really done a great job, you know, kind of leading their rotation this year. And uh, I think beat Appel last night. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, oh, you know, out duel Appel. And, uh, you know, I think when you look at the last uh, couple of national seeds, I think that's really intriguing because you have Oregon right now in the eighth spot. They play Oregon State next weekend. Uh, uh, and then you look at NC State and Florida State, yeah. who you guys have on Monday. Uh, those two teams play this weekend, and that could very well decide that last uh, national seed that the NCAA is willing to give the ACC three national seeds. So uh, a lot has stayed here the last couple of weeks. But I think when you look at, like, the top four or five uh, national seeds, I think those are you know, pretty much set in stone unless, uh, you know, somebody really kind of, you know, sputters down the stretch. But I think right now uh, that NC State uh, – Florida State matchup coming up is huge. The ACC's Atlantic Division lead is on the line there. Again, they start three this afternoon in Raleigh. NC State leading that opener 3 nothing right now. NC State's won 20 of their last 21 games as Blake Alamon steps up. And that finale of that series will be Monday night on ESPNU. Danny Graves and I will be in Raleigh for that one. The importance of that, you talk about for several reasons, but a top eight national seed. Kyle, I know that you don't necessarily have number eight solidified in your book yet you think it could be either one of those two yeah I think potentially I mean I think whoever wins this series definitely puts himself in the driver's seat at this point what do you th teams that, that aren't on that I mean who do you think outside of Florida State which we know has a chance but who are some others you think could surprise that, and bounce up that's a great question because I don't see a lot of teams out there I think there's one team to kind of keep an eye on I think it's Mississippi State uh, you look at Mississippi State as Ole Miss this weekend if they're able to play because of the weather. Uh, then they finish the regular season with South Carolina. So, tell you what, if you can take both of those series and play well in Hoover in the SEC tournament, uh, Mississippi State has an opportunity to kind of move into that mix. Right now, their the resume is kind of lacking what it takes to take a, get a nat, top eight national seed. But uh, State uh, certainly has a chance here the last couple of weeks to get some marquee uh, series wins. Well, Mississippi and Mississippi State played an inning last night before getting rained out. Rain really kind of sweeping across the south and southeast in general. Yeah, we don't know anything about rain over here in the yeah. last couple of days. <laughs> like a foot. I don't. I came in, uh, you know, this is my first day here, so I'm, I'm, I think it's beautiful here all the time. As far yeah. as I'm concerned. Way to go. You're the good luck charm. Yeah. Blake Alamon up with. Jay Statham on first. Statham moves and Alamon swings. Foul. Everybody goes back to their position. How about a couple of teams that, you know, maybe nobody really talking about outside of basketball season? Louisville and Indiana, with all apologies to Teddy Bridgewater and their football team. Yes, Louisville very good there, too. But how about these two programs nationally in baseball now? Yeah, you know, the big story to me is Indiana. I think when you look at last year in the Big Ten, Purdue was a team I think, I think really put the Big Ten on the map last year with a strong campaign. Uh, then I think you look at Indiana this year, you know, Kyle and I were just talking about it before the game. I mean, those guys can hit. Uh, you look at Kyle Schwarber, their catcher, uh, has really had a nice year for them. Sam Travis uh, has had a great year for them, and, uh, you know, they can really swing it. So uh, they're kind of a scary team uh, to watch in the postseason. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, I think they're a team to kind of watch out for potentially kind of an outside shot at the national seed. I think if they can finish strong, they get Ohio State next weekend. Uh, in Columbus. Uh, I think if they can get that series and, you know, win the Big Ten tournament, who knows, maybe they can kind of move in that eighth spot. So, uh, you know, I like Indiana Club a lot, and I think you look at Dan McDonald and uh, Louisville. I mean, what a job that whole staff's done. They, you know, they get to Omaha uh, early in, the, in their tenure there, and uh, they've, they've made some facilities upgrades, and they've just done a tremendous job. You look at Jeff Thompson, a guy that will be a top pick. Uh, in this year, this year's draft, I and mean, you look at the Chad Green, not not the big-time prospect that Thompson has, but he's really done a nice job in that rotation. Ground ball to first, Katz fields it on the break on the play with Jace Statham, and he slides over to second. Now with two down here in the bottom of the third. You talk Louisville too. I, I think you know, sometimes when when we see conferences grow, baseball sometimes can maybe get the bad end of that. You get Louisville going to the ACC. Wow. That's a huge bump for the ACC because that's a program that's been able to do it in the Big East. Yeah, and don't forget about Joe Giordano and uh, Pittsburgh. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. The Big yeah. East, they're having yeah. a great year, and they'll probably be in the tournament. The Big East could easily get four bids this year. So the East, East Big Ten, about. right? Yeah. I mean, you, you're looking at two leagues that yeah. don't typically have much I mean, representation. The, the Big Ten, the Ohio State is a team I have in right now. Ohio State has Oregon, which is a great home series to get late in the year. If they can win that series, they, they're in great shape. And you look at the Big East, Seton Hall. 
uh, you know, in good shape. They they took the first two games from South Florida, a team that I think will get in, and uh, now they're you know now they're in the driver's seat on the good side of the bubble. So uh, exciting year for some of these conferences who uh, don't often get uh, three or four bids in the postseason. Colt Langford up, tying run, standing on second base in the form of Jace Stadium here, two down. And Langford pops that one up. Shortstop Alex Bregman takes a few steps back, comes back up, and ends the inning. One nothing LSU through three again, just four to go. It's a seven inning game. Kendall Rogers, don't go anywhere. We want All you right, back. Sounds good. All right. Think of the NCAA as a spirit squad cheering for student athletes at every big event and every small one. We'd be there in the classroom, at graduation, at their first job interview. Okay, so don't think of us as a spirit squad. Think of us as a mascot. Well, just know we're always there for student athletes. LSU, the finale of this three-game series on graduation day and weekend here in College Station. Big game for both LSU. If they win the game, they win the SEC West. AM still thinking NCAA tournament, but they got to keep winning. Dari Noka here, three-time Stanford All-American Kyle Peterson there. And Kendall Rogers, National College Baseball writer for Perfect Game, here with us. We're talking about some surprises, Indiana and, and Louisville. Indiana went down. And they took two out of three at Florida. How much of an attention getter was that at the time and how much might that help their chances of getting a national oh, that, that was huge. You know, I've said this for years. When you look at the Big Ten, uh, you know, the Big Ten obviously has some, uh, you know, academic things that kind of hindered them in the past. But, uh, you know, you look at the, the history of this conference over the last 10 years, and I've always said if they go out and play good teams early in the year and they win those games, people are going to see that. And I think Purdue did that last year. Uh, Indiana did that this year against Florida, though it's not the Florida of last year. It's still a pretty decent Florida team, as you saw last week. Uh, so, you know, that was definitely an attention getter. But I think that the, the consistency of, of Indiana has been what's caught my attention the most. They've just been consistently very good. And, uh, again, like a lot of Big Ten programs, uh, you know, they're, they're one of those programs that they just built a new stadium. Purdue just built a new stadium. Ohio State has a nice ballpark. Michigan just redid their stadium. So uh, I think you're going to see uh, the, big, uh, the Big Ten as a whole just get, just get better and better, you know, in the future because I think they're making a stronger commitment to uh, winning. What do you take away from this, what we're looking at here uh, in the state of Texas? Yeah, the question is what don't, you, what don't you take away from it? I mean, when you look at those three teams, you know, as a, as a native Texan here, I mean, I, I grew up, you know, trying to decide where, where to go for regional because you had three or four in the state. But it's, it's been a weird year offensively for everybody. I mean, when you look across the state of Texas, you know, I think Rice is a team that has some uh, potential offensively. But overall, the offenses in the state just are not very good. But, uh, you know, you look at Texas, for instance, they're a team, uh, I, think, I think opponents are hitting like 220 against them, and, and they've got that kind of record. They're wow. last in the Big 12. So, I mean, it's, it's really astonishing. Uh, to see that, I don't think it's going to stick. Uh, I think when you look, at, uh, look, I think when you look across the, the state, I think Rice is a program that will continue to have success. Uh, I mean, I think they'll make the postseason. But uh, you know, TCU, a team they they really count on Kevin Cron yeah. to kind of be an All-American type of first baseman, uh, and he just hasn't had a great year. So I, I, I chalk it up to, to just a year. The offenses in, this, in the state just aren't very good. So Mason Katz with a leadoff walk here for LSU. Kendall Rogers, National Baseball writer, uh, here with us in the booth. Rafe Rhymes steps in and Rhymes to short double play chance. Reynolds, the glove flip to Alamont over the first. He's doing it all defensively. This guy is a human highlight reel so far today. <laughs> I mean, earlier saves a run, then turns two of the smoothest double plays we've seen so far this year. One on a pirouette throw. Now watch this one. The only chance you're going to turn two is right there. Back Turn it over and flip it to Alamont. And the beauty is he knew it was coming. They've played enough together up the middle that it didn't catch him off guard. Alamont's ready. That is sweet. Backhand, no less. Wasn't the forward glove flip like you're shoving it to it? The backhand. Make it even tougher. Come on. KP could have done that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to go back to the Big Ten for a minute because I think it's an interesting study, and, and part of it is just facilities. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put you in the role of AD. If you're an AD at a spot that is trying to grow the game, what do you think is the most important thing to do first? Coaches, uh, I, I think when you look at Michigan, the, the, the biggest thing about Michigan is, and I thought Rich Maloney was a good coach, but I think when they went out and found a new coach, and you know, who did, yeah, who did they do? Who did they go get? They went Eric, went and got Eric back, which is one of the hottest young coaches in college baseball, and they paid him premium money. So uh, I think number one, coaches. I think number two, facilities. When you look at uh, college baseball, you look at it as, as a partial scholarship sport for now. 
uh, you know, your, your chances of winning uh, go up if you make a commitment. So I think that's been the biggest key. Big play over at first from Cole Langford to go up and get the throw from Melton, and that'll do it for LSU. Remember, it's a seven-inning game. We are halfway through it. Kendall, thanks for coming in. Hey, it's been a Good pleasure. Thanks for coming. It has been all Mikey Reynolds defensively for Texas A&M who trails LSU 1-0. But my goodness, Kyle Peterson, he's put on a display at shortstop. Mikey might just find himself on SportsCenter tonight because the two that he made up the middle were absolutely perfect. But this one can't be overlooked because it saved the run and totally changed in any pickoff at second. Now watch this. Throw off to glove side. All I'll do is spin and throw a seed to first to end the inning. And this is just... This is just being a baseball rat, man. I mean, thinking about this play as it's coming, knowing the only chance you have to turn two is to flip it. All Rhymes could do is shake his head right there. Three pretty plays by Reynolds. No doubt about it. His team down one nothing as we go to the bottom of the fourth of what is a seven inning game this afternoon because they had to complete the second game of the series this morning. SEC rules state that the second game on a getaway day is seven innings. And this is Stein leading off. Stein that lays down the bunt. Eads, easy play. Not the best bunt we've ever seen. Well, <laughs> I think just, part of that, too, that got him was a breaking ball. No. It was sometimes the simplest statements are the absolute no, greatest. No. <laughs> that covered it. I think the breaking ball fooled him, too. Was looking fastball, breaking ball fooled him. It deadened it a little bit. Stein, one of the guys in this lineup that has the ability to hit it out of the ballpark. That's that's not yeah. an out you want to give away. I know. It's Rob Childress loves to bunt, but you don't often see the cleanup man who happens to be a catcher trying to lay down a leadoff bunt in inning. That's, what, power. that's what I'm saying, yeah. <laughs> All right, third baseman Hunter Melton comes in. <laughs> he's not bunting, I no. promise. <laughs> no, he's certainly swinging away, and he's down 0-2 here. I don't know, maybe Rob Childers wants that one back there from Stein. I think Stein would want that one back. I think so, and I, I think he probably did it on his own, too. I think it's one of those where you peek down, you see Barra playing behind third base, and the idea is right, but the problem is, if you're button for a hit and a guy throws you a breaker ball, it's already going to deaden the ball. It makes it that much tougher to put the bunt down in that spot. That's the one where you just take the strike. Just take the strike and try again. Hunter Melton flew to left field his only time up breaking ball just inside two and two. Oh Melton got a hold of that but not. Far enough. Wind blowing in. That thing really didn't have a chance. Stevenson there makes the easy grab. Two down. That's two balls. It looks like off the bat he's hit well, but they haven't carried like they initially looked. I'll tell you the guy that's been pretty good today is easy. We talked about at times he can struggle a little bit and then find it. Gives up a hit in the first. Has given up two since. So three hits allowed so far for each. Just one strikeout, but just one walk too. He's forcing a to put it in play, and this is kind of typical leads. The stuff is really good. If it's in the zone, usually he's going to have a fair amount of success. Got himself into some trouble. The first two guys on base of this ball game through 20 first inning pitches. As we sit here with two outs in the fourth, he's thrown just 33 cents. And that's a slow roll to Bregman. Bregman cannot make the bare hand in play, and that's Daniel Mingan on base. He's going to go for second, and he'll dive in safely. Heads up base running play by Mingdon. Hey, what off the bat you think in one, two, three inning, LSU's out of it, will go to the fifth, but it's a ball that Bregman probably needs to play with his glove right here. This is where you got to know your runner. And with Megan running, he's not a guy that can fly. I think Bregman had enough time if he gets around it to glove it and still make the throw. But this is just heads up base running. There's nobody waving him, telling him where to go. The minute he saw that ball was far enough away, nobody would get to it. Now it changes the inning. A and M with a guy in scorer position here with two outs. They rule that a base hit for Mingan, so he's one for two. Brandon Wood now the left fielder who struck out swinging in the second steps in with a chance to tie this ball game up. You didn't feel the bare hand was necessary. Mingan not the speediest guy on this roster. I think that's part of it. I mean the bare hand just makes the play so much more difficult because you got to field it perfectly. That's a double. By the way. 
That is <laughs> ruled a double. a double. You're right. That's a double. <laughs> That's a little league type of double. Yeah. I'm gonna put it right in the book and count it. I guarantee you that may be the softest hit double in baseball this season. So Mengden on second, Wood at the plate. That got him. Part of this with Bregman too is route and if you don't circle this ball if you don't get around it he made the decision way too early to try to barehand this ball if you just take a little bit of a banana it did get to the grass up. so officially we have a ball that got to the grass <laughs> I was kind of hoping it did I, I, I wanted it to stay in the dirt and have a, a true double that stayed on the dirt but for Bregman if you just get around that ball you surround it a little bit more of the moment for Bregman if you just get around that ball you surround it a little bit more of the momentum's going over towards first base then I think then you can make that play with a glove. With the route he took, it's even tougher if he tries to glove. Well, I'll tell you, the beauty of this, though, for Mangan is, you know, at the end of the year, he'll look back and he'll say, I slammed that thing off the wall in left center field. I don't know how it didn't get out. How did I not get three? <laughs> Craig Bratson up now. Two Aggies on base here. A little two-out rally, perhaps, for A&M. 0-1. Oh, Bratson singled back in the second before finding himself picked off. To end that inning. As the train chimes in the background. Can't see it, but it's coming. Bradson up the middle. That's a base hit. Mingdon coming home. The throw cut off. It's one one. We're tied in College Station. It's a crazy game sometimes. I mean, you, you get first two guys in the inning, and you tie up Mangdon on a ball that looks like it's going to end the inning. You have essentially an infield double followed by a hit batsman, and then Bratson does exactly what you're supposed to, recognize the breaking ball, landed it right out in front of Andrew Stevenson at center field. Mangdon off and running the minute the contact's made, and the Yankees end up tying it after it was two outs, nobody on to start this inning. And the decision to go for the bare hand play there by Bregman ultimately is what gets this run home. Yep. Otherwise, that's not a double. He's probably standing on third at best right now. And that'll bring up the nine hole hitter, Jay Statham, who did lead off the third with a base hit. So now certainly is a two out rally. The last three Aggies have reached base, one has scored. They've just changed the call on Mengen. It is Don't not I the, to see that as a double. <laughs> it's not the softest hit double in the season. It's now been called a single and an error on Bregman that allowed him to go to second. Breaking for third and thrown out easily is Brandon Wood. What are you doing there? Left-handed hitter. It's just it's such an easy throw for the catcher, and you run yourself right out of an inning. I, I can promise you he went on his own right there, and that's just not a decision you make. A right-handed hitter, maybe you take the chance, but no chance right here. AM though comes back to tie it after two outs and nobody on. We're tied heading to the fifth. Ready to slide into the fifth inning here. Bluebell Park College Station, Texas. The junior second baseman Jacoby Jones leading off for LSU after AM just tied it at one in their last at bat. Dory Noka, Kyle Peterson with you here in College Station. Jacoby Jones sends that deep to right field. Stata moves over, dives. It is a foul ball. Can't make the grab, but a great effort. How far that ball went. I mean, that, that carried all the way to the warning track out in right field. Off the bat, it didn't look like it had any chance, and Stata just kind of runs out of room down there, but that ended up short hopping the wall out in right field. Like, and that, you know, we've seen two well hit balls by. Hunter Melton for AM that haven't carried that one off the bat of Jacoby Jones. Yeah, somehow found its way out this there. This kid's hands are special, man. When he gets to it, it really goes. There's a lot of movement. You see the front leg will come all the way up. His hands are kind of moving all over the place. I think it makes it a little bit tough, but when it works, when he gets those hands set and ready to go. The front foot gets down in time. When he connects, probably has the best raw power on this LSU team. Parker Ray on for his fifth inning of work here. Again, his third career start, but warming up 
one of the great closers we have. That's Jason Jester. 13 saves this season. That's tied a Texas A&M record. He's just starting to get a little loose in case he's got an opportunity later. Again, it's seven inning game, not nine. And we keep reiterating that because it's something a little bit funky, but in the SEC, if you have to play two games on a getaway day, even if it's a completion of a game going into a full game, that second game has to be seven innings, and that ball is belted by Jacoby Jones. Diving play and left by Brandon Rue. Well done out in left field. You can see Wood had a beat on it the entire way. Glove was up early, was kind of timing that dive right until the last moment. When the ball was hit, I thought this ball had a chance to go out, but it got in on Joseph's hand just a little bit. Glove all the way up. Head really quiet when Wood was running out there and changes the inning pretty significantly. Parker Ray pumps the fist. And he's done everything you could ask for him to do in this ballgame, too. Brandon Wood, the highlight play. That'll bring up the catcher, Ty Ross, who walked and scored LSU's only run. That came back in the third. Again, we're, here we are tied in the fifth. This is essentially like a 1-1 game in the seventh. I mean, you've got three innings to go because it's a seven-inning game. What is the change, if any, Kyle, in approach for these two coaches? I think you, you'll continue to see him be aggressive on a base pass because now you're just playing for a run. And so the first guy gets on the inning, and unless you're right in the heart of the order, you're going to butt him over just to play for a run. Ross well hit into center field. Bratson barely has to move. Two down. Now this is a huge game here for Texas A&M in particular. Big game for two teams coming up Monday on ESPNU. It's the AECC and a huge matchup. Florida State. And North Carolina State, the finale of a three-game series on the line, the ACC's Atlantic Division Championship, perhaps a top eight overall seed in the NCAA tournament. Coverage begins at 6.30 Eastern with ACC Monday pregame. Seminoles and Wolfpack on Monday. That last check, that was a 3-0 Wolfpack lead. NC State's won 20 of their last 21. Score right now as we get an update remains three nothing. They are in the eighth. NC State half a game behind Florida State in the Atlantic, so a win would vault them into first place at least for the moment. They are dangerous right now, really dangerous. We'll have Florida State and Clemson next weekend too. Games two and three of that series from Tallahassee Friday and Saturday. How about Florida State? Uh, Really getting a lot of national exposure. The game Monday against NC State. You've got them in a big one against Clemson. And then on Monday the 20th, they're playing one game just to basically get to 56, them in North Carolina. So you're going to have a top 10 matchup there with plenty on the line in terms of seating as well. And we'll have that on ESPN. Yeah, they've got their hands full of the next two weeks. It's a, it's a tough run for Florida State in part because of who they're playing, but also is when they're playing. I think they play six games in eight days. Six games. I mean, it's it's pretty tight for Florida State. And not exactly easy sledding when you go to NC State and you come back play Clemson right at the end. And then that finale there against North yeah. Carolina before sliding over a bit to Durham for the ACC tournament. Parker Ray, meanwhile, just walked the nine-hole hitter Andrew Stevenson. So LSU back up to the top of the order and Sean McMullen, who's one for two today. Stevenson breaks for second. The throw from Stein. It's looking good, and they've got it. So the walk in the end does not hurt Parker Ray and the Aggies. We go to the bottom of the fifth in a 1-1 game in College Station. Continues on ESPN Sunday and Monday nights. First on Sunday Night Baseball, 80 Eastern. Mike Trout and the Angels face Alex Rios and the White Sox. And then on Monday night, David Wright and the Mets try to regain a little momentum when they face Carlos Beltran and the Cardinals. Both games again on ESPN and also live on Watch ESPN. I'll tell you what, they get younger and younger when they get phones these I was going to say, look at the work of the iPhone already. <laughs> Maybe little angry birds, you never That's know. outstanding. <laughs> Kyle Peterson, Dari Noka with you here. Bottom of the fifth. Very important game here. Again, LSU with a win. Wraps up the SEC West. For the 17th time, if AM gets a win, they get a huge home series victory against the third-ranked team in the country as they won the game on Thursday night. 
one one game here seven innings in total is what we'll have for you unless we need more. Statham there a pop up again Jay Statham this second time he's been both times he's been up. He actually came up the inning before but was left on when a runner was thrown out. He's always ended up leading off now both times he stepped to the plate. You see Rob Childress. Texas A&M. Has been to six straight NCAA tournaments. That is a school record. Seven is not going to come easy. They've got some work to do if they want to get there. In the meantime LSU this is a program that. Comes in they've actually won six straight road series in this conference so that is a string that is on the line as well. Paul Maneri and his team. His programs won six national titles that's tied with Texas for the second most all time behind only USC who's got 12. In close games though they've been very good games decided by two runs or less they're 12 and three this season. And that ball is well hit. But tracking to his right to make the play is Mark Laird so Statham goes down. Talk about LSU's defense, and, and I think what gets overlooked sometimes is what they're doing in the outfield. To get Andrew Stevenson in center and Mark Laird, who's essentially a center fielder, playing right. I mean, those two guys can really cover some ground out there. And Laird, that wind's going to blow the ball back to him a little bit, but still, made a play that wasn't quite that easy, looked really easy right there. We go back to the top of the Aggie order. Mikey Reynolds, one for two today, stolen base as well. Again in this seven inning game this is who knows I mean maybe the last time that we're going to get to see the middle of that Aggie order after Reynolds you go two three four with Alamon Lankford and Stein. And it's 0 and 2 to Reynolds. Sixty two pitches for Ryan Eads who comes in eight and one on the season. See though that two through five hitless on the day. It's really been eight nine one that's done the damage for the eggs. All the hits coming from eight nine one. Rather all but one four to five. Spot right there for Eads too, and that's what he's done. When he gets ahead 0-2, they're trying to throw that fastball just off the plate. Now we throw the breaker ball down and away from Reynolds again. Reynolds base hit his second of the afternoon. Now it gets interesting doesn't it Rob Childress loves to move his guys a base stealer here he's got 13 on the season one today how aggressive do you suppose he may be I think he's aggressive but I don't think he's aggressive on the first pitch and now becomes which is one of the greatest parts about the game the chess game between Paul Maneri and Rob Childress and Andy Sawyer who's the third base coach for Texas A&M when does he run does he run with cover do you pitch out early because at some point I don't think Mikey Reynolds is just going to stand there. I think he's going to be off towards second base the question is. Do they do it with cover with Alamon hit and run? Well, he's going on the first pitch, the throw down, not in time. Reynolds is safe. Disregard everything <laughs> I just said. <laughs> it's a, you're right, though. This game is beautiful, Tom. Do you pitch out first pitch? Is he going to run right there? You know he's going to do something at some point. Reynolds isn't just going to stand on first base. And Andy Sawyer's Rob Childers not wasting any time. First pitch and a pretty good pitch to throw right there for Ross. I think even if that ball's right on, Reynolds probably had it stolen. A great jump right there against Eads. Now, Mikey Reynolds in scoring position with just one out. Number 14 on the year for Mikey Reynolds. Alamon left field, fair or foul? It's foul. Wasn't far from giving Texas A&M the lead. You come to the ballpark with a glove. You're waiting for that play right there. My old guy in the gold shirt down there with the glove that was just hanging. I mean, you got to make that play. That you can't, yeah. you can't dial one up better. You could reach over, rob one right there, get yourself on TV. That's all right. Now here's my question: You go that old guy? Are you going O O L E or O L D? Yes. It, which both? Yes. <laughs> we're, we're gonna, we'll just get everything okay. right here. Gotcha. <laughs> Watch your Twitter later. <laughs> O2 to Alamon. One and two. All right, now watch this, okay? No. Uh, that, I mean, that's the one. That's the one that if you're standing right there, you're standing there for a reason. 
You got your glove in that spot. It's the one the entire day. But if he makes that catch, we're still picking him off the tr uh, off of the dirt there. And but he made the catch. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's that's the point. That's well, it's really important. now they're calling him. Now they're calling him right now. Hello. <laughs> that guy just called you old. I think I said my old buddy. Is that better? You did. You did. There he is. Yeah. Wave. Tell wave him to wave. Him. Tell him to wave. Come on. Tell him to wave. Wave. You better put your glove back on. Yeah, they got us. You never muted. know. You might get another shot. They got us muted right now, KP. <laughs> really? Kyle called me old. What's he at? Kyle Peterson on Twitter. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> uh, Eads checks back on the runner Reynolds. <laughs> Fly ball, center field, Stevenson. Comes forward probably further than he thought he'd have to, but he makes the catch. That's two down. <laughs> Work that Ryan Eads has done so far, and they've been pretty efficient with the pitch count. Just 69 pitches with two outs here in the fifth. The one thing to pay attention for right here, Langford. Is a first pitch guy. He's up there hacking right away. He does not walk. I'd be really careful with the first pitch right here to Langford. Again, the go ahead run, Mikey Reynolds, a speedster standing out there at second. You've got to figure any base hit, unless it is absolutely mashed, should make it 2 1 Aggies. First pitch, he took a strike, 0 and 1. Grounded to first and popped up to short in his two at bats today. Langford hitting better than 330 on the season after 146 a year ago. You could see Langford trying to clear his entire body to get that ball to the inside part of the plate. To me, that tells you you got room away. If you can throw that change up or something soft down and away right here, he was trying to force himself to really get to that ball on the inside. And that's what he's gripping right there. Gripping the circle change behind his back. Let's see if he stays with it. And we stay one and two. 23 RBIs this season for Langford. Number 24 would be huge as far as the series goes, as far as. Texas A&M in terms of momentum goes and any chance at that NCAA shot. This win would go a long way here if they could take two out of three from number three. Let's see this is the guy you want up with two down right now in a runner in scoring position. The O2 down one and two. AM won the first game of the series Thursday night on ESPNU 2 1. We're losing in a game that spanned yesterday and this morning 7 4. Lankford center field. Stevenson there. That is not going to get it done. We are through five. Only two innings remain this afternoon here in College Station. We're tied at one. LSU do up 430 Eastern 430 Eastern ESPN with Kia NBA counting We're at the top of the LSU batting order here in the top of the sixth of the seven inning game Sean McMullen leading it off he singled back in third his last time up 
McMullen, Laird, Bregman, and if anybody gets on, Mason Katz. Third time through the order against Parker Ray, who's making just his third career start. Two and one. Give Parker Ray a grade here, Professor Peterson, in his third career start. Oh, this is an A. It's an A because of the way that the game lays out. And I think the key for AM is if you can go from Parker Ray to closer, you got exactly what you want. Then you shorten the entire ball game. I mean, the ideal is to go Ray 6 7, give it to Jester, and see what happens right at the end. And now Jester's starting to heat up. He was down there just kind of playing a little bit of catch before. This is now beyond catch because at this point, if they get into a bind, it's Jester. Regardless of what the score is, you're going to bring Jester in at this point. If that happens in the third or fourth, probably not going to happen. Now, Jester's been fantastic. So has Ray as he gets another strikeout. Second time today, he has sent McMullen back with a strikeout. Five strikeouts. That's a career high. Here's how we got to this point in the LSU third. That's when they struck with a base hit. And then in the AM fourth, the base hit there from Craig Branson, which drove in Daniel Mingdon, who got on by a single on the infield and an error on Alex Bregman. That got him to second, which allowed him to score. Two things to remember about both of those innings. LSU had a guy picked off at second with the bases loaded, nobody out. That changed the entire inning. LSU only scores one. In the inning that the Aggies scored, last guy gets thrown on third base trying to steal. So, I mean, it, it's this ball game could have had two, three, four runs for each side at this point. But each side kind of ran themselves out of each inning. Mark Laird, you saw him a moment ago on the tape. He's the man who drove in the lone LSU run, and that's a base hit his second of the afternoon. I would go to Jester right here. Really? Yep. I would go five to outs to go. Absolutely. And no lead. Yes. I would go to Jester right here. Well, Jason Jester, we showed you the closer warming up in the bullpen. Now you may, boy, look at this. Rob Childers may be uh, on the same wavelength. He's looking over there. He's making the move. I th and he's because of big situation here in College Station. 1-1 one, one game, top of the sixth. Remember, it's a seven-inning game. And Alex Bregman stepping up. 400 hitter. See what he did in high school in Albuquerque. Dynamite. Dynamite player. Missed much of his senior year with an injury. And he's come in and really acted like he's owned college baseball as a freshman this year. From day one. I mean, the minute he stepped onto campus, playing shortstop, hitting third in the lineup for LSU the entire year. I'm going to go back to his last at bat. 3-0 count with a chance for LSU to add more to it. And he swung at a pitch that you just don't want to swing at 3-0. So let's see how Bregman makes the adjustment here. First time that he'll see Jason Jester, and this stuff's really good. Fastball into the low 90s, a good slider that's primarily what we're going to see from Jester. 13 saves on the year. Obviously, he won't get his 14th today because of the situation, but that 13 saves ties an AM single season record. All right, could be in position for a win, perhaps. You like the walkout song we heard? Bad Companies, Rock and Roll Fantasy. Of course, there's a line, here come the Jesters, one, two, three. Anytime you can, you can break in a little bad <laughs> company, it's always a good day at the ballpark. Now on Thursday, Jester came in and threw nine pitches to get Katz, Ibarra, and Ross. He would see Mason Katz, assuming there's no second double play hit into by Bregman. Struck out Mason Katz on Thursday. Let's take it. Taken right there. Here's Bregman earlier. This is a 3-0 pitch, and it ends up ending the inning. A little 4-6-3 on a beautiful play by Mikey Reynolds to end it. Still 3-0 count. I think that time either he was asking for time or wasn't ready. He just took the fastball. Bregman fouls it off. One and two now. 13 for 14 in save situations. As Kyle said, this is not one. But that 13 save number ties an AM record. One, two to Bregman. Got it. Oh, Stein couldn't hang on. Nearly had him. Oh, that close. Thought he had it too. He thought he just held on to it right at the last minute. It looked like it fell out of Stein's glove. 
So a second chance here for Bregman. Yeah. yeah. Wasn't as close as I had. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Check on Laird over at first. Bregman, center field. Bratson makes the play, two down. Bregman 0 for 3, came in hitting 402. He went back to that spot that Bregman will swing at, but at times he can get to it too. Fouled off the pitch, the fastball that was up and out of the zone went right back to it. And that was close because if Bregman is just a split second earlier, that ball's in the gap and LSU takes the lead. Well, that brings up Mason Katz, who struck out against Jester two days ago. Go ahead run here in the sixth of a seven inning game, standing on first. 63 RBIs, that's tops in the SEC for Mason Katz. And 31 of those have come with two outs. What do you think the likelihood is we see Laird break for second at some point? You know, it's tough right here because you got Katz and, and behind him you've got rhymes and so you get some offense You don't want to run yourself out of this inning because you could put back-to-back -to -back Together here potentially with some cover, but you just don't want to take the bat out of Katz's hands Well Katz sends that one into right field will there be a play for Statham? No, it's Into the people into the grassy berm over there and right which is nicely populated by purple and gold. A lot of LSU here. A lot sure of that. LSU. They were cooking too. What a day. I mean, we're talking, what are we, 70 something degrees? Yeah, just your, your typical uh, baseball season field down here in Texas. Mm -hmm. It's usually about 96 with humidity. I mean, this is ideal. <laughs> this is, this is, the storms that you had to deal with the last two days really kind of helped clear out some of that humidity. We did it for you. Yeah, I appreciate that. The seats are about full, the grass is about full. Cats can't get that one. Nick McKenna deserves a shout out. He's the head groundskeeper here for AM. They got five inches of rain the last two days. Now, I don't need to tell you that. Five inches of rain the last two days. And you managed perfect. to still go golfing yesterday afternoon. You snuck a few in. How was that course looking? Traditions out here at College Station. It was pretty solid. <laughs> One, two to Katz. Now you check over on Laird again. Rafe Rhymes on deck. 431 average a year ago, tops in the nation. Big moment for Jester. Katz grounded a third. Melton up with it. Cross the diamond. Three away. That'll do it for the sixth from LSU. They've got three outs to go. The Aggies have six. We move to the bottom. Welcome back, College Station, Texas. Dory Noka, Kyle Peterson. We go to the bottom of the sixth, and Texas A&M KP has had some opportunities. They've run themselves out of them. Spots on the base pass, and we've seen it from both sides today. Yeah. Where spots that you think this is the one that I think is really going to bother A&M because you make the last out at third base with a left-handed hitter. One, two. I thought Stevenson might have been safe at second base, but this is where we stand right now. All tied at one as we go to the bottom of the sixth. Remember, just seven innings today. Because of the rains that came this week, who knows? We might have to go more than seven away. This thing's going right now. Ryan Each has been really good. Parker Ray is out, and the closer for AM, Jason Jester, now on. Heads up. Well, yeah. Some things no need uh, need no description. That would be one. <laughs> Troy Stein leading off here in the sixth. Four, five, and six in this lineup. Coming up. Stein. Center field. Stevenson, one down. So Ryan Eads cruising into the sixth inning here this afternoon, giving up just the one run. And M has mustered six hits over the five plus. Three straight. Whew. That's scary. That's a two-seamer that just got away right there. Mm -hmm. Trying to throw the fastball on the inside part of the plate. Body got a little bit quick. And 
You can see that peak right there. That's just because it hurts. Yeah. But he said, I mean, there's no chance anybody's throwing at anybody with a 1-1 game in the bottom of the sixth. So the freshman Melton on first now as Daniel Mengden steps to the plate, who has already hit a ball out this weekend. Yeah, Mengden hit a ball out today. In fact, he homered in the A&M seventh this morning in that resumption of the game two in the series that was pushed back to today. 9.30 local time. They played the last three innings of that second game. It was an LSU win, but Mingdon did home. Here's Mingdon right at us, just below us. And another fan with a glove fails to make the play. Well, I thought we had one up here, KP. I, I was about ready. to jump behind you. I wasn't ready. I, I, that would have been an absolute embarrassment if that ball would have got back there. <laughs> I take everything back. I, I said yeah. about my buddy down left field with, yeah. the, with the gold shirt on. Let's let's call it even. Exactly. <laughs> Has he tweeted you yet? Or Melton standing on first, Mangan up now 0 and 2. There's been a few that have claimed to be him that have tweeted me so far. Is that right? Is that there. right? Oh yeah. Come on, you Twitter's clever a fan. Thing. Hey, the problem is you wouldn't know if it was. No, that's, that's true. We'll go, hey, I'm going to stick with the claim for now. One out, one on, 0 2 to Daniel Mengden, who's one for two in this game. Mengden, ground ball could be two. Bregman, Jones, Katz, inning over. Seven inning game. We go to the seventh. Who said it's a seven inning game? Maybe not. LSU seventh coming up, 1 1. It's a and he. Starts things off against Rafe Rhymes. Played a second. Good looking play by Blake Alamon. Pretty good work by Alamon right there. One to get around that ball. So all the momentum's now taking him out into right field. But then watch how quick he gets to his feet. So he's got to lay out to make sure and then gets the short hop. So it's a little bit easier to glove. Plenty of time when it gets to his feet. Looked like a hit when it came off the bat of Rhymes right there. But instead, it's an out. Wow. Cheese right by Christian Ibarra there. Again, think of this as the ninth. That's the last inning of this game. It's the last scheduled inning of this game because of the completion of game two of the series this morning. You want to know who's coming up for AM and what could be their last licks? They've got seven, eight, nine in the order coming up. Wood, Bratson, and Statham as this was popped into right field. Now foul territory. Good looking play by Statham. Statham went about a mile to get this one. <laughs> Might have been a play that would have been easier for Alamon to make. He kind of peeled off at second base, and it was Statham. And if he doesn't get there, no chance to make it. Watch where he starts. He's playing normal depth out wow. in right field. Wow. I mean, he went about 60 yards to go get this ball. It hangs up just long enough. Ends up just in front of the wall. That's a heck of a play by Statham to get the second out. So now Jacoby Jones steps in. The junior second baseman flew to right, then flew to left in his two times up today. Swing and a miss, and Jester is throwing. He doesn't waste any time either. No. It's just get it, give it to me, let's go again. Now in 18 and two-thirds, ninth inning, uh, nine innings of work, I should say, or innings of work in the ninth of this season. He hasn't given up an earned run yet. He has not given up a ninth inning run this season. This is the seventh. Feels like the ninth because it's scheduled to be the last inning of this game. But in this situation is when he's been at his best. See why too he pumps the strikes on the fastball's good. It'll be low 90s at time could get up 93 94 but he really relies on that slider. See if he goes back to it right here with Jones. He did and Jones got a piece of it. Brandon Wood back and he makes the play. Three up three down. It is here comes the jester. One two three. AM with a chance to win it when we're back to College Station. The seventh coming up of the seven inning game. Take a look around the country. Take a look here. NC State, a big series that started today against Florida State. They win the first game. Carlos Rodon, eight innings, one earned run, eight strikeouts, four walks. He goes to seven and two. That puts them temporarily in first place by half a game in the Atlantic Division of the ACC. Oklahoma State knocks off Oklahoma in Tulsa in the Bentlam opener. Now they play the next two days in Oklahoma City and Oregon State with a win over Mark Capel and Stanford. As you can see, here we go. 
pretend it's the bottom of the ninth. This is the last scheduled inning of this game. Bottom seven. Seven, eight, nine up for the home team and the crowd getting a little bit rowdy on what is a perfect South Texas baseball day. Brandon Wood leading it up. Ryan Eads continues cruising along here. He's gone the distance for LSU. Eight and one on the season. Swung on and missed by Woods. Eads still has a little something in the tank, doesn't he? Right up to 91 right there. Seventh inning so far for each pitch count still pretty good too. Just 83 pitches for Ryan Eads. In control, 0 and 2. You see on deck Craig Bretson, who you want up if you're AM. He's two for two today, a couple of base hits. Wood, little number. Not going to be easy, but it rolls foul, so we'll stay two and two. In fact, Kyle Peterson, the next three guys do up have all singled in this game. In fact, between the three of them, Bratson, Jay Statham, and Mikey Reynolds. They've got five hits this afternoon. Five of the six A&M hits. I mean, the offense has been tough to go for today for A&M, but yeah, this is kind of the part of the order you want up at this point if you're A&M based on the way it's gone today. This, by the way, this is a bit of a sign of why A&M has struggled some this season. This is the 44th different lineup that Rob Childress has gone with. 44th lineup in 51 games. the challenge you just if you can't find continuity I, I think there's some things that are going to be consistent at this point once they got Hunter Melton in and the way he started Melton's going to stay in the lineup then they lost Reynolds for some in the middle of the season that changed some things up Wood left field foul certainly looks and has the feel of a one run game and if it is indeed that LSU is seven and two in such games Texas A&M this season eight and nine in one run games. Wood. That may be trouble for LSU. It's a leadoff base hit for Brandon Wood. I think in that spot too, each threw it exactly where he wanted to. They're trying to throw fastball in, and it got in on the hands of Brandon Wood, but he just got enough off of it. If it's a wood bat right here, it probably blows up. It's a little fly ball to Bregman. It's the first out of the inning, but with a metal bat, he could muscle it enough to get over the head of Bregman and AM now in business to start the seventh. There is action in that LSU bullpen. Chris Cotton, the lefty, senior from Shreveport, number 58, Nick Rumbelo. Number 38, the junior from Buller, Texas, each pitched this morning. And what was the completion of an LSU 7-4 win as Bratson tries to move the game-winning run over to second, but he goes foul on the bunt. Bratson singled in the second, singled in a run in the fourth. He's got the only RBI of the day for a &M. It's a team that had struggled much of the season, but after they won the opener of the series, on Thursday night, they'd won five in a row. They lost the game that spanned two days and sit at five of six right now. School record 44 career sack bunts for Bratson. He's trying to make it 45, but he pops it up. And the play by Ross and one away. Oh, an opportunity lost. It's the guy that went up there if they're going to lay a bunt down, but right there for Bratson, the first one he bunted way too hard. You can see the hands really low on the bat right there, too, but just jabbed at it, went straight up in the air. Pretty good play right there by Ty Ross, too, because if you don't see that ball right away behind the plate, there's no chance you're going to go make it. He picked it up the minute it was off the bat. That's a big first out right there for LSU. The ball running away from him, too, as he makes that catch. 
That brings up the nine old hitter Jay Statham. He's one for two, singled in the third, flew to right field in the fifth. Statham up the middle, base hit. Wood looks at his coach, but absolutely stops at second. AM game winning run on second base right now as we go to the top of the order and Mikey Reynolds who has two base hits today. Two nights ago Mikey Reynolds was up in a key moment in the seventh and he had the game winning hit then in a 1 1 game. It's the guy you want standing there. I mean Re Reynolds is the best player. He's the best all around player for Texas A&M. We've seen how good he's been defensively already. Pretty good day at the plate today with two hits for Reynolds. Palmer is going to make the slow walk out right now and I would bet that we see Rumbelow in this spot just to go right on right. But you got your closer Cotton the left hander warming at the same time too. Now Reynolds so far with runners in scoring position is 17 of 47. That's a 362 average. All good signs here for Texas A&M. Going left in the game winner. That includes Thursday night, the opener of this series in the seventh. That base hit gave A&M what would eventually be a 2-1 win. Here we are, seventh inning, runner on second in a 1-1 game. The only difference is. That wasn't the last inning. This is a seven inning game because of a game being completed this morning. SEC rules dictate the second game, even if it's a partial, on a completion getaway day, must be seven innings. Chris Cotton comes in. What are we looking for here? Well, now we got both closers in the ball game. Cotton, a closer for LSU, 11 saves on the year, 176 ERA, just two walks in the season for Cotton. I think the one thing to watch right here and why the matchup. The left-hander against the right-hander makes sense. One of Cotton's best pitches is a changeup, so it's slow. We'll go down and away for Reynolds, but the tough matchup here is Reynolds is not afraid to take that ball the other way. Look for Mikey Reynolds to try to use the right side of the field right here. Cotton did get the save this morning. Nine through nine pitches this morning to wrap up game number two, seven four. Brandon Wood on second. He's your game-winning run. Reynolds grounder third over to second for one to first Got it. Double yeah. the Mason counts with a fist pump one pitch two outs we need extras tied him up right there Mikey Reynolds trying to get it done on the first pitch instead of going away it looked like a breaking ball that got in on his hands and the key to this one is the first throw Ibarra gets it remember he used to be a shortstop first throws great Turned by Jones is perfect, and LSU is out of the inning. Two extras in College Station. Who said it was a seven inning game on getaway day in the SEC, right? Nope. We need at least eight. We move into extras. Mikey Reynolds just grounded into a 5 4 3 double play to end the AM seven. And with that, Jason Jester begins his third inning of work. A little interesting play here at first as we looked at it during the break. Watch the right foot of Katz. I don't think it got back to the base in time. Watch it come off the base and you yeah. can see I don't think it got down in time. I would tend to agree with you and that is trouble for the Aggies. Ty Ross into the gap being waved into second. Here comes the throw from Bradson. Not in time. Lead off double for the Tigers. Just a second hit of the weekend for Ty Ross. Picks a pretty good time to get his first of the ball game right here. Elevated fastball. And this is the thing, man. He, when he gets to it, he can really put something behind it. Not really like a catcher either. Good line out towards second base. Had it in front of him the whole time. It's a leadoff double for Ty Ross and the Tigers here in the eighth. That'll bring up Andrew Stevenson, who hits ninth in the order, but he has walked and singled so he's been on base both times and the LSU fans making some noise. How about this setting right now? I mean you get LSU to travel so well we had a on their feet in the last inning. It looks like the pinch run right here for Ross which makes sense. I think it's Jared Foster that will get a run at second base with nobody out for LSU. Rob Childers on the way out right now and this again is to talk about how you defend potentially the bunt right here. Andrew Stevenson coming up. There's a ninth hitter in this LSU lineup, and he is one of them that'll lay it down. Four sack bunts on the year for Andrew Stevenson. A 
As far as the pinch runner goes, it is indeed Jared Foster, number 17. Now moving over to second base. And it, you said it, a great, great weather, great crowd, great representation from the road team as well. And a big game, a rubber game, extra innings. There's not graduation day. There's not much more we could get here in College Station. It's dialed up perfect. There is Jared Foster, pinch running. Sophomore from Lake Charles, Louisiana. Really more of an outfielder in terms of defense. So we'll see what Paul Maneri does when LSU takes the field in the eighth. He's pinch running for a catcher. So that brings up Stevenson. You lay one down here, get him to third with one out. Absolutely, especially because of what you got coming up. You got McMullen, the leadoff hitter, coming up next. So you turn the lineup over if you're LSU, but I'm butting every time here. And he does. Bunts it foul, though, 0-1. No reason to run out of the box right there for Stevenson, though. You can see him starting towards first base. Just get it down. Ideally trying to get it down third base. You want Hunter Melton, the third baseman, to have to vacate third and come field this ball. And then you know Foster would be able to make it. Top of the order behind Stevenson. McMullen, Mark Laird, and Alex Bregman. Dangerous, though, just 0 for 3 today. Stevenson there gets it down perfectly bunted just with a tough play nobody on the bag Langford was off the bag two on and nobody out It's a base hit for Stevenson so you got the corners crashing in this spot which means the second baseman's going to cover and that's what makes it such a tough play right here it's it's not a bad move right there by Jester but all on the second baseman never got there so he gets there late and he doesn't find the base you got to get there in enough time to find the bag because now it's catch and then try to find the bag. Even if the throw's right there, the speed of Stevenson might, might be enough to beat it out, but the bunt was in a perfect spot. Then it forces the defense to speed up. My apologies to Langford there. That was indeed, as you said, Alamon covering first. So now runners on the corners, nobody out for the top of the Tiger order, Sean McMullen. On the season, 4.55 with runners in scoring position. Fouled. You hear the chants of LSU. No, we're not in Baton Rouge at Austin Box. We are in College Station. I'm surprised the middle of the infield isn't playing in right now, especially in a spot like this. It's with one out, I can understand playing back, but surprised that the second baseman and the shortstop aren't playing even to where you can throw out the base runner at home. Yeah, a little bit of representation from Alex Box. I should stay here uh, in College Station. Great turnout. Big day, big opportunity here for the top of the Tiger order. McMullen now down 0-2. Any signs of Jester tiring at all here, Kyle? Longest outing of the season, two and two-thirds. I think so, not no. yet. I mean, the last one was a bunt, and the first one, the fastball was elevated to Ross, though. Steps off, nothing doing. Runners on the corners. We are in extras here, the seven-inning scheduled game. Day 0 and 2. the catch it'll get a run home anyway foster tags at third lsu with a 2-1 lead great approach right there by mcmillan recognize the breaking ball right away and all he's trying to do is get it elevated into the outfield this ball hit plenty deep no chance for a play by state out in right field i like mcmillan and then putting him in the leadoff spot about halfway through the season has proven to be really effective for lsu junior college transfer he's come in at four hits in the second game of this one and this time, the leadoff hitter recognizes breaking ball, gets under it, gives LSU the lead. So 2-1 now as Mark Laird steps up. He's singled his last two times up. 
Andrew Stevenson over there at first. And the LSU chants continue here in College Station. Stevenson broke on the pitch. He'll retreat to first. Little hit and run right there. Laird just trying to protect it. You put that ball in play, you know you're going to take second base if it's on the ground there. Just wanted to make sure that Stevenson wasn't thrown out. Oh, Laird shows butt. And now one and two to Mark Laird. That is the one thing they'd like Laird to do a little bit more of, is, is lay that bunt down. I mean, you see the third baseman playing back, and Hunter Melton wasn't all that far back, but if he could do that, it really makes himself a pretty complete hit. Down a little bit more, and he's able to lay the bunt down when he needs to. Now you see Alex Bregman there on deck. 0 for 3 on the day. Alex Bregman, who came into the day hitting 4-0-2. One on, one out, two one Tigers. Jester throws back to first. Laird, little slapper in the right field. That gets down in front of Statham. And the new runner. Is number 11, J.B. Moss. So J.B. Moss comes into the game to run for Langford. So Langford's day ends, one for four. That brings up Troy Stein, who is 0 for three. Wondering about J.B. Ross over there at first. This is his 23rd appearance of the season. He's one for two in stolen base attempts. Represents the tying run there in the eighth. Popped up. Ibarra at third, called off by Bregman, the shortstop, two down. Stein was trying to win it right there. Not one that he thought he could get under and potentially run out of here, and the swing showed you it's exactly what he was trying to do. Just got too far under. It popped it straight up, so now last chance for AM will be the freshman Melton. If you're wondering if anybody on this team can win it with one swing in this situation, the answer is if anybody could, it's probably this guy, Hunter Melton. Four home runs, leads Texas AM. And they need him now. Perhaps Arkansas fans watching this, they know their team cannot win the division if LSU can close this out. The LSU picked second in the preseason in the West. Arkansas was picked first. One and one. Texas A&M has lost eight of their last nine against LSU. Melton, check swing, short, Bregman, flip to second, and that'll do it. LSU comes into College Station and takes two of three from the Aggies and in the process wraps up their 17th SEC Western Division Championship. Pretty good weekend for the Tigers right there. So we got the West and the East already wrapped up before we go to the last weekend in the SEC. And really, it's the two most dominant teams in the SEC all year. Vanderbilt's run away with it. Now LSU clinches before the final weekend. 
big, big weekend series right here for LSU to go on the road in a series that A&M really, really needed. They're not done. They're not out of it, but winning two out of three this weekend would have gone a long way. Yeah, they could have used it for sure. So LSU wraps up at least a top two seed in the SEC tournament. They can still catch Vanderbilt, though that certainly seems to be unlikely. 2-1 the final here, LSU over the Aggies. Don't forget a big ACC baseball game Monday night, 7 Eastern on ESPNU, Florida State and NC State. Wolfpack leading that division by half a game after beating the Seminoles today. Up next, Sports Center. For Kyle Peterson, I'm Dari Noka, thanking you for joining us. And with that, we say, have a great weekend from College Station.